Hello everyone, my name is John Locke and I'd like to welcome you to the winning trade, but first the required disclaimer material. This presentation is given for educational purposes only. We're not broker dealers or financial advisors and we're not making any specific trade recommendations. Also, please be aware that your risk in trading options is substantial and please make sure you are aware of all your risks prior to placing any trades. Also note that in this presentation, we are covering hypothetical computer simulated trades and or results. They're believed to be as accurately represented as possible. Keep in mind, live results can vary from simulated results for many different reasons. If this is your first experience with us, my name is John Locke. I'm a trading performance, wealth, and success coach with Locke in Your Success LLC, where myself and my team of mentors are here to help you win in the markets and in life as well. And today, I am here to take you into the realm of something called high probability options trading. High probability options trading, also known as positive data trading and income trading, is an option strategy that utilizes the passage of time in order to make money rather than depending on price movement. Now, this doesn't mean we're going to win money all the time, but we can often make money whether the market goes up, down, or sideways, which is a fantastic benefit, especially when the market gets into different types of trends, such as the type of trend we're in now. Now, the trading strategy that I'd love to share with you today is called the M3.4U. Now, the M3.4U is a trading strategy I developed for stage three of our Trader Success Blueprint that we cover in our Go membership level. Now, stage three is the stage of a non-subjective trader who is becoming proficient in non-subjective strategies. The M3.4U can be traded at multiple levels. It can be traded at a stage three level, but it can also be traded at stage four level, which is what we call a positionally subjective level, and then stage five level, which becomes a uh, technically subjective level as far as price movement and implied volatility as far as they're concerned. So the M3.4U strategy itself is a very dynamic strategy that can be learned as a relatively new market neutral options, positive theta trader, but can then be adapted to you as you develop as a trader and become more understanding of how to position yourself within the marketplace, and you become much better at technical analysis and reading the market where you can really start to bring your gains to, a, to the next level. So let's talk about the M3.4U. It's a somewhat bullish bias market neutral income strategy that was developed for and is traded on within our membership on the Russell 2000. The trade requires a minimum of $2,500 per trade, we trade it in our examples on options trading for income at a $5,000 plan capital, which would be a two-contract position, which we will show you. The position does not have a profit target when we're using our rules-based version, but in general, I expect a good month uh, to return about 10% of our plan capital, and this position has an exit loss trigger of 10% of plan capital, or in this case, it's going to be a $500 exit loss trigger should that happen. So let's take a look at the strategy. Here is the M3.4U risk graph shown in Option at Explorer. This is a broken wing butterfly position. Uh, this software shows us the risk of our profit and loss, essentially, with price movement. And you have the asset price along the bottom here. The asset's currently at 1676, or it was on entry. And we have our triangle shape line, which shows our profile for profit and loss, which is shown up our right side at expiration, should we let the trade expire without making any sort of adjustment or anything. And then we have our curve line, which is known as the T plus zero line, which shows us or is a representation of the expected profit and loss that the software is making based on price movement of the Russell 2000. So here, if I just hit this magnifying glass, we have our option strikes over here on the left side. We have our calls on the top, our puts on the bottom. We're doing this position with puts. We are entering normally 56 days to expiration. Uh, we'll talk about why we're not doing that in a few minutes. And we're entering in the puts and we're taking a short strike that's 17 to 27 points under the money, which puts us at 16.50. We are taking a 60-point lower wing, which puts us at 15.90. And then normally we take a 40-point upper wing, one, two, three, four, which would be here. 
If we do that, though, something called delta is out of range on the trade, so or at least too close to a, to a limit on, on this specific example. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move this outer strike until it becomes into an acceptable range for us. So with this here, I want to position the size. Our limits, well, first of all, what is delta? Well, delta is essentially the slope of this line. And right now it's showing us 1.34. And what it means is with $1 of price movement, the software is predicting that the profit and loss will gain $1.34 with the first dollar of price movement, and, or it'll lose $1.34 with the first dollar of price movement, depending on whether that price movement is up or down. If it's up, we should gain in this case because we're positive delta, it's a positive number. If it's down, we're going to lose. If it flips to a negative number, that um, that relationship changes. And uh, that's what this looks like. I want to make a note, if you look at last episode's winning trade, the quick and dirty broken wing butterfly, this looks ex extremely similar to that trade. But what you're going to find is that we do a lot of different broken wing butterfly style trades here at Lock in Your Success. And we use that basic configuration because it is a very adaptable and probably one of the more friendly types of positions that you could be in. And it makes good for having a trading strategy that's non-subjective where you really don't change the rules when you know, market direction shifts or implied volatility shifts or our price cycles get bigger or smaller. Uh, it makes it pretty friendly for that type of a strategy, which is what we have here. Now, uh, all of our broken wing butterfly style trades to the novice might look the same but they all have differences within the rule sets of these trades. And these differences are going to make the trading strategy react better to certain types of environments. It's going to kind of fine tune it to a certain environment. So in other words, one might be fine tuned to a more trending environment or, or uptrending environment. One might be fine tuned to a more neutral environment. One might be fine tuned to a more down uh, environment. One might be fine-tuned towards uh, high implied volatility situations. One might be more towards low implied volatility situations. I think you kind of get the picture. There's just so many things. You know, Sometimes uh, these trades can be sensitive to back and forth movements. Uh, sometimes it can be more sensitive, like I said, to really strong trends and so forth. So these all have different parameters that, that fine-tune them one way or the other. And your job... You know, when you first come into this business, you're you're a you're a beginner and, and you and you don't know that much necessarily. But your job here is to understand the differences between these strategies, which are going to create significant differences in a lot of different types of environments, and understand why they're making these differences to educate yourself so that you know how to position yourself when you start understanding the general market conditions. At first, you don't even understand that, right, when you first come in, but then you start to get an, uh, an idea of an understanding for trend, whether the market's going up and down. Then you start to get an understanding of whether it's volatile or non-volatile. And then at some point, you get an understanding of, of, of whether, you know, what your support and resistance levels are and what your trends are and, uh, and your moving averages and Fibonacci's and all this other stuff. And then once you start to develop an understanding of what the market is currently doing and what it's likely or not so likely to do in the near future. Once you start to gain that understanding, then you come back and you apply it to what you know about positioning. You can take these trading strategies and you can create gains that are exponentially higher than any non-subjective income trader will, would ever produce. And you can do that much more consistently year after year. So this is where we attempt to bring our traders as traders when we take them through the Trader Success Blueprint. So it's pretty exciting. And I like to see that. But let's go back to here. We have our broken wing butterfly. We have our strikes here. If we're going to do an order entry in our software, we want to do it as a butterfly order, not as single options or single strikes. We want to make sure that we do this all at once. So you want to make sure you use a broker that will do that. Uh, in this position here, we usually enter at 56 days to expiration, but you can see we're missing strikes. So uh, we're going to stay true with the date at which we would normally enter. We, we normally enter the trade, uh, again, we're doing this at a stage three level, which we're completely non-subjective. We're not looking at charts or anything, or implied volatility or price movements or anything. We're just coming in here at 56 days to expiration on our monthly cycle, when we're putting the trade on according to what the guidelines are. Well, I can't do that because I'm missing strikes here. Uh, historically, that's uncommon. 
and fairly unusual. It does happen from time to time. Uh, we just went through a period here where we had it happen like three months in a row or something. And the most recent cycles, we haven't had that problem. So it looks like they've corrected that. But you know, as traders, we run into challenges, and we, we have these rule sets, and we have these situations we run into. And you know, we, we need to make a decision on what to do about it. So here, what I did is I just went to our 42-day, which is really, what is it, about 14 days or something, uh, closer to expiration. And we'll start here. And if the trade goes well, we'll stay here. But if we have to make uh, a roll in the position or adjustment in it, we could always close it here and then bring it into this month if we have the strikes available later in the cycle, which is the case here. But this is the way we're going to start. We're going to start this. This is a modified entry M3.4 U because we're 42 days to expiration. We still want to trade it out the 56. So like I said, at some point, there's a good chance we're going to shift over here. So let's move forward and we'll actually, let's take a look at what's going on in the market just for the heck of it. Here's a situation that we have. We were way up here, gosh, a few weeks ago. And now, uh, what is that? 2020. Now we're all the way down to 1660. This is a huge down move for the Russell historically, and we're way down into here. So let's see where this brings us. It's Friday, September 23rd. Again, we're in, in this case, the November 4th cycle. We're eventually being the November 18th. And right now, this cycle's 42 days to expiration. I'm just going to go to next adjustment. So what happens here is we go to the 28th and we ignore adjustment. And we got a significant up move in the asset. With that up move, we now have options available in our proper cycle. This position doesn't really require a roll. And as a matter of fact, according to the guidelines, you never really have to roll it up. Our upside adjustment is we get negative delta. And we do this would be standard. OK, and that shifts us to something that's positive delta within guidelines, within our capital limits, and then we continue on with the trade. Like I said, we did a modified entry, and we would really like to be in our cycle for, for November if we can. So with this big up move, what I decided to do here, and if you can, you can see it on the price chart, we had uh, just a, this huge up move the following day. Uh, and the requirement of an adjustment I just decided to close out of this level here at break even and then shift into the new cycle. So previously we were at 1650, 1590, 1700. Uh, all I did was shift into the new cycle. Now, shifting into the new cycle gives us what we call time, right? This cycle is further away from expiration than that cycle. And with that time, what happens is the T plus zero line changes. So your, your T plus zero line is going to be a little bit different from cycle to cycle. So I don't have to actually make a, a change in the position to get my delta from negative to positive. All I actually need to do is just shift into the cycle on the same strikes. And now I'm positive 0.4, uh, 0.41 delta. And that was the adjustment that we had made when the, the adjustment was triggered. We just put ourselves in the proper cycle at the same strikes. So let's move forward here into next adjustment. It's September 28th. And we'll go to October 4th, which is, what, about six days. And the asset price has continued to rise. Actually, it chopped back and forth a little bit here. But now it's it finally took off to the upside. And the position is now negative delta. So uh, that being the case, we're just going to come in here and we're going to make that adjustment we had talked about before that we would have made if we were in the right cycle last time, which was bringing the 1700 put down to 1690. And you would do that on a vertical order. So you would do like minus one plus one and put that in as an order in your software. And that brings us to positive 1.11. That is within guidelines. We're within our capital parameters here. So we're just going to move forward. And I'm just going to go to next adjustment. It's October 4th. And we literally do nothing until the 25th. So this is like 21 days. We just kind of sit in the position here. And during that time, we chop back and forth, never really triggered an adjustment. And now we have a breakout even higher. And with that breakout comes a negative delta situation. 
And with that negative delta situation is going to require an adjustment. So uh, we talked about actually delta limits on this trade. So let's do that quickly. Trade this size, our positive delta limit is four. Our negative delta limit is three if we're inside our long strike. By that I mean if the asset price is lower than 1690, it's gonna be minus three. If it's higher than that, then our delta limit is zero. So if we go to the day before here, uh, this is what we look like. Our delta is above zero or it's positive, so there's no adjustment there. We have this really big move the following day. Our delta is negative. We're going to want to make an adjustment. We're going to do the same thing and run into something like that. And that brings us from minus 1.02 to positive 0.86. So that is within guidelines. And here is our new position. So it's October 25th. Let's just go to our next adjustment. What happened here is the market continued to rise. We became negative delta again. And this time, though, when we try to make our adjustment and we take a look at what capital would result in that adjustment, it would, it would, we would have like $4,500 in the trade or $4,600. Now this trade has technically has a planned capital of $5,000, but we actually never get $5,000 in it. If we're over $4,000 with a adjustment of the upper wing, we also adjust the lower wing. So that would require bringing these up into here, which basically puts us flat delta I want to be positive, so if I come into here, this would be our adjustment. We would just do a condor order, roll in both the wings, and our trip positioning would change from the blue position here into the green position. And let me just ignore our trades here. That was our trade. And then let's go to next adjustment. It's Thursday, October 27th. We're 22 days to expiration uh, at this point, right? So we've been in the trade about 34 days and we're up $349 on a 5,000 plan capital. So about, you know, about, well, about 7% or so, 7 or 8%. So let's go to next adjustment. Brings us to November 1. Here we are, uh, we're negative delta. So we're going to minus one plus one, such as that. And what did we end up doing here? Well, it says zero here. Looks like we have a discrepancy in the software. This is acceptable and uh, we can do that. We can also play with bringing this other one down. Uh, also, if we were to do that, that would be acceptable as well. That would be acceptable as well. But this is where we ended up with this particular trade. And, uh, you know, this is acceptable too. So let's move on here and go to our next day. All right, the market starts pulling down a little bit. We are still in with, within acceptable levels here. The Thursday. Now we're at 0.44 positive, so we're good. Now we're running a little bit negative, right? So let's move forward. That was an adjustment trigger the previous day, and we actually didn't do the adjustment that day. That happens sometimes. So these are not back-tested positions. They're real-time simulated trade positions, so we have to make our decisions at the time. Things are actually happening, and there is a possibility here that this was actually triggering zero or slightly positive delta here when we actually looked at the trade. Um, but for whatever reason, we ended up not making an adjustment here. If you go to the following day, the market goes up, and we're now negative 0.74 on the delta. So now we're going to make that adjustment we would have made the other day anyway. It would have been more beneficial to make it the other day, but that's going to bring that down. We're within capital level here. So let's um, clear that out. Let's have that happen. This is our new position. We're up about 10% of our plan capital, $501. So this is, this is a normal winning trade. Uh, type of a uh, size. Let's uh, let's move this forward here. 11 days to expiration. We'll just click it through the last days. This is 10 days. We get a 44 point down move, but we are within delta parameters, so not an issue. Uh, it's four days to expiration. 
five eleven, and then three two. And we would just expire this position. So let me just jump into this following day. This is an overnight AM expiration, and we're at about $516. It shows us negative delta, but there's really nothing we can do here. Our, our options don't have any extrinsic value, so moving them doesn't do anything, except for cost us money. So we wouldn't do anything there, and we would just let this expire the following morning for a profit of whatever the expiration line is, which is about $511. And that would be a profit of a little over 10% on the M3.4U, this episode's winning trade. If you love what you see, I encourage you to come on over to LockingYourSuccess.com. That's L-O-C-K-E in your success.com and check out our Go membership where you have the opportunity to track or follow along with our M3.4U trading strategy, along with 11 other powerful, effective trading strategies on our Options Trading for Income webinars that we hold every Monday morning. And while you're enjoying locking your success, come on over to thewinningtrade.com. That's thewinningtrade.com, where you can check out past episodes of The Winning Trade, as well as information on upcoming winning trades. And you can also check out our free trading performance podcast, where you can learn to skyrocket your trading results regardless of the type of trading you do. If you have any questions, comments, or anything you'd like to see in the next winning trade, please post those in the comments below. I'll make sure I answer your questions for you personally. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on the next winning trade.